mine. Okay. So, yep, this question. Uh, I think that's mainly we have like two approaches. The first approach is, of course, dynamic pricing. And I guess you know <laughs> really well about it. Um, but I guess it's not really suitable here because uh, I mean, the comment about the optional comment, I'm sorry for my repetition, is uh, it usually means that like, for example, the talker did extra job. So it filled in some data, which is not like the minimal requirement for a task, but at least uh, it's done some additional job and you wanna change, increase usually the price uh, for this. So uh, here you can do and use such functionality as rewards and you can do it um, two ways. Uh, I mean, also two approaches, two ways of approaching this problem is like basically looking at every task in the interface post factum, watching them. And if you're seeing like a completely like a perfect answer, you're just using the interface uh, button which is like send a bonus and you're creating a bonus you're assigning some money fees are also applied on a bonus they're sent to the uh, some specific worker who did this assignment uh, also you can do it through the interface where you have all the users you can filter them and like just assign bonus to some subgroup of the users also, of course, you can do it through API. Uh, here you, we have a link to the rewards section uh, where you can just, for example, I can uh, think of a process where you, through API, you're getting a list of users who filled some additional field and they, for example, some validation applied to this field, uh, some validation like regular expression or something and it seems pretty significant and satisfying. So you're just selecting this list of the users and you're sending a reward to them. So uh, that's how you are applying. Basically you're changing a price post factum, increasing it. But decreasing the price post factum, no, we can't pull that off because there should be a minimal wage. Uh, that's basically the fairly treating of a locker. If he has uh, enough skill, you're either like, rejecting his answer, which is not like unsatisfiable or you're like giving him a minimal wage that you set up for a pool. So that would be it. Does it satisfy you? Yes, yeah, that's interesting options. Uh, I actually now have one project where there is this situation and we like, uh, we scraping all of results from pools and mm -hmm. then uh, just filter if the, this field is filled mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, giving bonuses uh, based on uh, how many fields completed. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, usually, uh, you also can throw in some regular expressions, I think, or I would say you even can try create a separate project uh, validate some fields differently, select the users, like some projects which are we doing for exception and rejection in some task uh, enrichment, for example, like, I don't know, creating a pictures, like uploading the pictures, and then you're creating a second validation project when you're checking that the uh, material is okay. You also can create a gradation, like for example, the scale from one to five, how like with a big overlap, how like, uh, high quality the result is, and then assign the bonuses per person, per person list, based on uh, this evaluation in a second project. So basically you always can like perform some filtration on users who completed your task and then just assign a bonus. I think. Yes, thank you. That's an interesting idea because now uh, it's a project about searching for differences between mm -hmm. two things and we are interested in using that talkers mm -hmm. have found so it's uh, very 
important for us to get uh, different answers and to not uh, to not give one person a lot of money if he if they just uh, write the same scene again and again because it's not very valuable yeah i see i understand yeah it's like a typical fraud problem so yeah i would like combine some regular expressions by plus maybe some other two lockers or a project it depends on the budget of course but yeah it's perfect that you're basically answering the question that we have uh, with your own experience <laughs> so thank you anya okay uh -huh. uh, what about the other questions girls do we want to go through them or you anya uh, want to see um, them i also don't remember the answer for the third third question about uh, does skill has have any expiring date was it third Ah, okay, to be. Oh, you're shooting today only for my questions. Magda, you're basically on vacation with me. <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, you. Uh, is it to be or to A you're interested in? It's to be. Okay, I see. Uh, so yes, we can, uh, but we can do it, uh, unfortunately, only through API. So through desktop version, if you remember, when we create a skill, you basically can say it's like name, description, and is it public or not? But uh, through API, we also have this option, which is like uh, skill TTL hours, which is uh, skill time to live hours, uh, which you are setting to some amount of time. And after this amount of time, skill expires if there weren't any updates to it. So it's not like a full expiration. It will be expiration only if the skill wasn't touched. So the person didn't do any honeypots or he didn't perform in any pools or something. If you personally want to change skill, I would like suggest the manual deleting it, like not manual, I mean just deleting it and recreating it. But yeah, some, some version of the expiration we have. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also, it's interesting what what will be the answer for first question about uh, one thousand five hundred classes for text classification. <laughs> oh, firstly, Anya, I wanted you to ask, but uh, about the expiration. But have you ever gotten a case uh, when you want to set exactly some particular expiration date for skills, or like for like? For example, not for training, of course. Uh, for training skills, we have like explicit expiration dates. As you know, it's like retrying, uh, retry after parameter in the training pool sets the expiration date for a training skill. Uh, but uh, did you ever had a problem that you want to apply a skill which is not training one and uh, set an uh, like explicit expiration date to it? Because it's interesting, maybe we should look in it deeper. No, actually, to tell the truth, I I've never used this, mm -hmm. and also in a lot of cases, I only use a training pool to set to set skill, and it still works. <laughs> so I. I didn't do a lot of projects where you have skill that is changes uh, according to how person make honeypots or mm -hmm. something like that. So yes, um, but now I have uh, like projects where skills can be uh, very specific. So maybe I will use it now. Okay, sure, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, Magda, is it your turn about the 100, no, 1,500 classes? <laughs> yeah, I think this is my question. So uh, I believe it's this one, yeah? Is it possible to create a text classification task with uh, 1,500 classes, with super classes and subclasses? So theoretically, it is possible to create a project with 15,000 classes. 
but we do not really recommend it uh, to just create a flat project. Exactly, you would have to uh, create uh, some hierarchy probably there, and uh, maybe have uh, 10 or 20 male classes uh, that would be super classes and have a project to classify those texts into those and then in each uh, super class would have its own um, project to decide on subclasses. I think this is the only way how uh, this kind of project can be done. So it needs to be broken down into several, uh, sorry, into several projects. I don't think we have done uh, this type of project with classification, but I, I saw projects with uh, image recognition that have been designed that way, and we were getting pretty good results. So um, I remember some kind of project like this that you have to identify something on the shelf. Uh, you have to kind of give like a general class. Uh, maybe this is like this type of drink or something. And then maybe like there would be another project that would uh, you have to maybe decide which brand it is, something like this. So uh, we know it have to basically be decomposed to kind of sub projects here. Okay, thank you. And also I have a question um, that my company interested in. I don't know if they asked already, uh, can we increase the limit of the pools that created in day? Now it's like 100 pools in a day. Can it somehow be changed? Yes, it's sure. be increased. It can be increased through API. Let me ask our, um, usually, as I know, it's innerly uh, increased by our support team by the requests. So let me go to them and ask other uh, mechanisms to do it, not only by the inner, like I'm not sure that external person can do it by himself because usually it does our support team for the request, but I will ask them and come to you and we will post the answer on that explicitly, okay? Because mm -hmm. I am sure we can do this. I actually did it for myself, but with their help. Uh, but it's also be suitable for us if it will be support person who yeah will sure increase. sure okay okay then perfectly I would research on that like in the okay. today tomorrow um, and, uh, also I thought about the previous question about uh, classes and decomposition uh, I have kind of interesting experience in one of last projects. So um, we did project and it looked kind of scary because uh, usually you, uh, you need to decompose the project in like a, a number of projects. So like to have one super class and if you change one, if you choose one of classes, then you will uh, also need to change to choose some of option. And if you choose one of these options, you need to write comment and some, but we decided to test it and somehow it gave us good results and still continue to work. <laughs> so that's what, that was strange, but it was that's very actually useful interesting. Project. Is there any possibility that you can show, show, share with, with me and Magda this project? I mean, if it can be anonymized because I'm just really interested how it might happen. That's hacking the crowd from the opposite way. Yes, uh, actually, I think we hacking the crowd because we said uh, not, not very low price. It's like, I don't remember, maybe six tasks for six cents. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, I will ask uh, if I can share, share this project and we will write to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It sounds interesting. And how you measured quality that it came out very good? By honey uh -huh. or just manually? Uh, yes, there are honey pots and we automatically receive 
the answers and we can uh, watch through them using our platform and check if this working all right. So I check like what people answer and it still works uh, like for two or maybe three months already. I can't remember. Perfect. Maybe already four. And what about the quality? Is it like above nine nine nine? Uh, oh my god, I would say nine hundred ninety. <laughs> would it? Is it above ninety percent? Is it close mm -hmm. to one hundred? Actually, I haven't counted <laughs> exactly numbers. I just see that there are not. I didn't see some false positive funds for something like that. So it looks like it's looking okay. But maybe because also we set a high skill. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah, it's actually very interesting because when I work in uh, advert advertisement conservation department, we had these projects when we did flagging of the advertisements. And it was like a big, big amount of subclasses because it's like it was about, I would say, 40 subclasses at least per page. But it usually was done by experts, like not to lockers, but more like uh, like upgraded to lockers in some way. I would say they were like even employed in some way. And when we tried to do this for to lockers, it shooted us in the leg. So we needed to decompose each subclass for each project. So it was basically generated 40 projects. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I would like really to see how you managed to like overcome it. Yeah, I think it's because it's always the same task, like not very big uh, field of things. Uh, so people are get used to this task and they like see it every day and they have the skill, uh, but also we not we had some project where it looked like we need to uh, do it for a lot of like different superclasses and for every superclass you will need to write uh, instruction so it looked like a lot of work so we decided for now to not use crowdsourcing cross for this case so uh, now we're thinking will we use it or will not I see, I see. That's cool. Uh, I think I, I've asked all the questions. Sure, sure thing. Okay, so Magda, what do you think? Can we just like think, call it a day or we want to like say out loud the questions? I would like to post them maybe and... Uh... Uh... I don't know uh, if we, Valia, what do you think? Uh, I think maybe it's better to keep it like we did the verbal one and post the rest in the Slack channel. I have an impression that maybe then more people will get the answers. Maybe not so many people will click on the video if we... So. Yeah, I will. I will put everything in text because people like to read, and if they prefer video, we can share with them video. But should we then go through all of them and record them? Let's let's just write all of them. Yeah, like in Slack, like all your questions that you post in general, and then uh, yeah, all answers. Okay, then let's call it a day. Yeah. Okay, Anya, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for this thank nice you, dialogue. <laughs> thank you, girl. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for, uh, for having questions. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>